What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rahman. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. So welcome to another episode of the video podcast series and today I have with me Mr. Vakar Shokat, who is an engineer working here in Norway, who actually came for his master's, mm-hmm. I think last year? Yeah, uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now after pursuing his master's degree in... in in computational engineering. Computational engineering. Now he's working um, in Norway. Well, actually, <laughs> let, let's get, 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 give it over to you, Carl. Yeah. Let's just tell about a bit about yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Okay, so as you mentioned, my name is Mohammed Vakar. I came two years ago in Norway and I completed my education in Masters in Computational Engineering from mm. University of Stronger. And mm. currently, I am going to start my work in um, uh, in a Norwegian company as okay. an IT consultant. Oh, great. Yeah. And by the way, he also has a YouTube channel uh, by the name of Abu Zargafari and I'll post the link in the description box below and he talks about, you know, getting moving to Norway for your master's degree, pursuing a, an educa- educational career here in Norway as well as, you know, other things like living expenses and all that stuff. So make sure you check that t- channel out. The link will be in the description. Thank you. Sounds good. <laughs> so in today's podcast episode, we will be talking about a couple of things really. Firstly, we'll talk about why exactly you should pursue a medical or an edu- educational career here in Norway or why you should come to Norway for your master's degree. And secondly, we'll be talking about the entire procedure from A to Z about moving to Norway when it comes to pursuing a master's degree or a medical postgraduate or pre-graduate degree here in Norway. So first, let's start off, Mr. Bukhar, with um, with studying in Norway. So why should one study in Norway? We all know, as I have made a video previously, that yep. education here is completely free of cost, not only for local students, but also for international students. Yep. That's the first major reason. Free yep. education, no tuition fee. Are there any other reasons? Okay, so um, I have two main reasons in my mind when I suggest others to come to Norway first. Okay. The first one is, as you mentioned, the education is entirely free, even for international applicants. Exactly. The second thing is that you have 100% visa ratio. Okay. Yeah, even you get the free education in other parts of the Europe as well, but the thing is you don't get 100% visa ratio. No. And that's the biggest advantage. For example, countries like, you know, Sweden, Germany. Germany, yeah. It's not really easy. Not everybody who applies gets the visa as well. But here you have 100% visa ratio. True. And once you get that mission, you have 100% chances of getting the visa. Perfect. So that's like two major reasons to come to Norway for pursuing, you know, your um, career uh, here. All right, and now let's move on to, you know, the major part of how exactly are you supposed to come from countries like, you know, like Asian countries like Pakistan or India or, you know, any other African countries to Pakistan, uh, to, to Norway. So firstly, let's start off with like, how, where do you, where you start the procedure if you want to pursue a master's degree here in Norway? The first step is the, and the easiest way to come to Norway is through student visa. Okay. That is the easiest way. As you mm. mentioned that there is a 100% master's visa ratio in Norway. Okay. So that is the easiest way and to follow that path is very simple and very easy. Mm. Let me begin with it. The first step in the process is you have to show that it's a university. University, okay. Yeah, and that you have to do through study in Norway to mm. This is a website that you go through and okay. you apply the relevant filters like you want to do masters and your field mm. of education. Okay. And then you get all the courses and the universities that are offering those courses. You will get the entire list. And I will post the link to all these websites in the description box below yeah. as well. And okay. then once you get those courses, you go to the official website just to double check that everything is there and okay. what are the requirements and what mm. you have to do before you mm. apply for the program. So you go to like, so because firstly you go open up the website studyinnorway.no yep. and under that you search whatever in which degree you want to pursue your masters right? yeah for true. example let's say if you are a you know like a medical doctor from pakistan yeah. then you know the easiest way to come to norway is by applying to a to a master's degree now here's the tricky part you know mm-hmm. God, the thing is that if you you know in in pakistan we have like mbbs yeah and or i think that's the same case in india as well and then you do yeah. your masters which is like your postgraduate masters which is like a sort of a, a, a specialization in your degree but that's not not how it works here in europe here mm-hmm. we have a six-year degree which is like one md degree and yeah. after that you just straight away start your specialization there is no like masters and you know mbbs so mm-hmm. there's one md degree right. and the easiest way as you already mentioned for like uh, you know uh, medical doctors or for students who want to study medicine or who have done a bachelor's is to come to Norway by applying a master's degree, let's say in neuroscience yeah. or in molecular medicines, in microbiology, yeah. whatever that may be, something related to like you know the medical field, apply for the master's program. And you will find the list of all these master's programs in the in on the study in Norway website. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. true. And once you get all these courses um, there is just one single website that you have to go through and apply for uh, your application mm. and that website is Soknar's web. 
Soknas web. Yeah, Soknas okay. web. You go to that website. Mm-hmm. You choose the university you want to apply, mm-hmm. and you re-register for every university you want to apply. Okay. Okay, and then. um i think it's very important to mention that the deadline for all the universities is starting from mid of october okay. till the first week of december till the first week so mid october yeah. to the first week of december all yeah. right uh but also like when you apply for once you have okay let's say i am from i want to move to norway from india or pakistan yeah. and i let's say i have chosen chosen neuroscience for example right. then i go to the uh, to to study norway choose neuroscience mm-hmm. i go to the official website of the university which is also linked uh, on study in norway, norway. Yeah. Uh, so i go to that official w- website and then i ch- can you know they they have actually listed the entire procedure you can on the website as well yeah, you can sure. see how to apply and you find everything but then you if you want to apply you go to the website called soknadsweb.no yeah, yeah. which will also be linked in the description box below yeah. and over there as you said you go there you and you register yourself and you choose the university first you choose university first you want to apply for then you register for that university okay. and then you log in mm. with that registration mm. and then you apply for that university okay and the, yeah. and the tricky part is that for every separate university you have to register a new time a so new time so on new the same website on the same website yeah. you have to register every single time for a new university application yeah. True. Okay. okay. Once you uh, have figured out which website is that and which mm-hmm. university you want to apply that, now here comes the thing that which documents you need to apply. Yeah. Which documents you need? Yeah. Okay. okay the yeah. first and the mm-hmm. foremost important document is you need to have your bachelor's transcript and master's. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, bachelor's transcript and degree with you. Okay. And also, not just the degree with you, you need to have it attested from the relevant higher education commission. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So your Great. bachelor's transcript and degree will be attested by Higher Education Commission, mm-hmm. which is HEC in Pakistan, mm-hmm. and also your matric and FSC or O levels or A levels, whatever you have done, okay. will be attested by um, IBCC, which is uh, the relevant board, whichever mm-hmm. city you okay. are in. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And and the same goes for let's say you know other countries as well. You know, whatever education you have completed in your country, mm-hmm. bachelor's or whatever, you know, you have to document that. So you need yeah. to have your degree, which is like attested by the university itself or the, yeah. by the commission, by the ju- education commission. Mm-hmm. and then you have to submit that um you know degree or while degree, you are applying while you are applying so okay. and yeah. there is no way that you can apply without degree okay yes there is no way you, you have to have, have your degree yes okay yeah. that's the first document that's the first document the next document is ielts IELTS. and it's mandatory you cannot apply without ielts no matter mm-hmm. if you have done your education or bachelor's whatever you have done mm-hmm. in english you have to apply with ielts you have to apply with ielts and, and yeah. yeah what's the like a minimum score you need for ielts that that's a good question the minimum score is 6.5 like okay. right? uh if for you have 6 you can uh, still have some places but the 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 recommended minimum 6 uh, is 6.5 yeah 6.5 for IELTS. so you need yeah. to have a proof of you know uh, of that of the fact that you have completed your ielts as well ielts yeah, with IELTS. like with 6.5 minimum yeah you can score. also do other english proficiency certificates like toefl and there are many others mm. but that you have to check on the website which one is okay. valid okay yeah mm. and after that you need to have mm. your passport with you while you are applying that's mm. very important so if you don't have your passport with you make sure that you um, apply mm. for one before you apply all right like a yeah. copy for a copy of a passport yeah for a copy mm. of a passport okay. and then the next document is cv which is also very important cv yes you need to have a cv and uh, here comes a very important question that Financial, is the, like or no 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 uh, the most question that i get uh, is what is the format of a cv that format students need okay. there is no specific format guys okay. you can follow any format that you have as long as it contains all the information that you want to mm. put mm. on the cv mm. okay okay and CV. then the next yeah and then the next important document is financial document financial documents mm-hmm. okay that's i think important that now, is even now here's a tricky part even though education here is completely free yeah. but you still have to document that you have enough resources in your home country yeah. that you can you know afford to live in another country true so true. So, so even though no tuition fee guys but listen to this okay yeah you have to show that you have enough finances while you're applying for education hmm. and the best thing is you don't have to send uh, the money while you're applying you okay. don't have to transfer the money you just have to document that you have enough money in your bank account okay and hmm. you can use your uh, bank statement your father's your siblings or any of your cousin hmm. or relative or, or anyone any the uncle or anybody yeah you anyone ask. you even you don't know okay. but if it's not your uh, bank, bank statement, statement then you have to attach the letter of sponsorship with okay. it okay so that's let's say if i am somebody uncle and i'm sponsoring my mm-hmm. my nephew let's say to move come to norway yeah. then i need to give him a letter of you know let's sponsorship. sponsorship that okay i am sponsoring his financial yeah. uh, financial aid or whatever mm-hmm. and that that will you also have to attach that letter of sponsorship yeah, true. okay okay and after a uh, letter of sponsorship the most um No I wouldn't say that this is a required mm. document but the optional thing is a letter of motivation letter some motivation. universities do require it 
mm. but most of the universities um, at least when i applied i didn't mm. uh, have okay. to upload it mm. but yeah, i think so it, it was, i think it would be a good idea generally to yeah. you know to to apply it is a good for, idea. with the letter of the letter of motivation as well especially sure. i think if you if you are if you have studied medicine in your country like mbbs or um uh, you know uh, any other or if you are a doctor or if you if you want to study you know for medicine after yeah. completing some other bachelors in sure. pakistan and you want to come to norway i think you know you know fields like you know masters in neuroscience and masters in molecular biology or microbiology these are quite competitive fields you know yeah. a lot of other students are also applying from other countries as well so i think a letter of motivation would be a good thing to have it is generally. very good yes. it is. especially if you have low gpa then you can show yeah. your motivation hmm. why you want to have this place okay and since you mentioned gpa are there any gpa requirements from your bachelors that's a good question because mm. there is no specific requirement that you need to have 3 or 80% or 70% okay. so mm. as long as there are um, the, it depends on the competition mm. how many applicants are applying on the specific mm. position okay so there is no specific there threshold no specific threshold yeah. okay perfect okay and the next part is actually you know about this um uh when when you have applied with all these documents yep. you have submitted all the documents you have done everything basically and as he mentioned the deadline is from like mid october to first week of december yeah how long does it take for, before you get your uh, application the, the the response to your application like if you have got your medical or university admission yeah okay so once you have applied with all the relevant uh, documents that you are required to upload mm. um i think it takes around 3 to 4 months or maybe 5 months maximum that you get the response from the university uh so norwegian universities tend to send you your admission letter if you are selected they tend to okay. send your admission letter okay. by the end of april or may okay Yeah. So okay. even if you are not selected, you will get an email from them after May. Mm. After the students who are selected, they will mm. get their email. Mm. Then uh, those who are not selected will get their rejection. Rejection. But that's okay. very rare. If that's you are, rare. okay. Yeah. If you're qualified, then definitely you will get the place. Okay. All right. Perfect. So like mm. around March, April time, you will get uh, your yeah. response on the you on the that. on the application. And once you have, let's say, gotten a yes from the university, once mm. your admission is secured, then the next part is to start applying for your visa. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Okay so visa process is very simple mm. it might seems like it's a very complicated process like you okay. have to go to a specific uh, website to search for the program then how to apply for mm. visa then how to apply for housing mm. but trust me it's very simple, very simple. and smooth yeah mm. once you um, get your admission letter then you get an email from the university you get actually two or three uh, emails from the university one states that um, you have to uh, apply for the housing okay yeah and so th- they basically guide you step by step yeah, true. so once you get your admission letter the university will keep sending you emails and you yeah. know just telling you what to do for the next step yeah they will guide you through every step of the of the visa process yeah, and of the true. housing process until you come here until you come here so they yeah. like they will really you know help you out till you come here. so don't don't yeah. worry about this no. but like for everybody wants to know what is actually the visa process then okay so for visa the first thing you need to have is your housing contract so once okay. you get the admission the university will send you an email mm-hmm. that this is the link where you can go and apply for your relevant housing okay okay so now you have your housing contract let's say then the second thing is after you get the admission the university will send you their bank account details and you will actually transfer the amount to the university account okay okay yeah so the amount that you have showed earlier you have to transfer it and transfer it okay. yeah and it's not mandatory that you have transfer it from the same person whose bank statement you used earlier mm. you can transfer it from anyone's from account anyone. it doesn't even matter but the point is that you have to transfer the money yeah okay. you have to transfer the money and you get the deadline of i think 3 weeks from the uh, the time you get the admission mm. that you have to transfer the money okay yeah and do you get that money back yes the good <laughs> thing is you get all the money back once you are in norway so once you move come to norway once everything is done and you are in norway you yeah. get all that money back as well yes. so yeah the, there's nobody who's taking your money guys. yeah and it's not even blocked like germany yeah, okay. they block your amount and they give you monthly a specific amount oh, okay. in norway you get all the amount back awesome <laughs> so yeah. you get everything back guys don't worry about the all about the money mm. all right so okay and then you talk about this specific website for applying for visa yeah okay what is so, the website the procedure is very simple as i mentioned that the university guides you through every process once you get that mission okay uh, once you transfer the funds to the university you get a letter from them that mm. they have received your funds and then you need your housing contract um then you need your that letter from the university that your mm. funds are already transferred mm. and there are a couple of other documents that you can check on the uda website mm. so basically uda is the immigration authority of authority norway, of norway. Yeah. yes so 
uh, you go to the UDA website, you apply, you register, and mm. you pay the apl- visa application fees. How much? Which is, is remember how much that is? Yeah, it's around five thousand the reaching kroner. Five thousand, I think, and that's around uh, five hundred US dollars. Yeah, five, around five hundred yeah. US dollars. So you pay your visa fees. You can pay it with your Mastercard, or credit card, whatever it mm. is. And then after you complete your application process on the, uh, uh, you complete your visa process on the UDA mm. website. Uh, then you have to go to the VFS global website. Okay. And that is because we don't have any Norwegian embassy in Pakistan that mm. processes students' visa. Okay. So VFS Global is the um, consultant company that mm. uh, help us to, to get the visa of Norway. Mm. So you go on VFS Global's website, mm. you register yourself, and then um, you get a checklist from the UDA which documents you actually need. Okay. While you apply for your visa. Perfect. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about uh, which documents do I need to submit, which mm. documents do I need to collect. Mm. So everything is very smooth and is documented. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So. It- and I will also link to the VFS um, global, uh, website. global yep. website in the description box below. Mm-hmm. All right, so now let's talk about, okay, so we have been through the, like, the major major parts, right? University guys, six to eight weeks for the visa application to process as yep. well. And then, now let's talk about how you get into medical school here in Norway. Or if you are a doctor, how you can come to Norway for your, let's say, postgraduate or, you know, yep. for start to start practicing as a doctor. And as I mentioned, this is a bit tricky, guys. And this is because for your master's degree, mm-hmm. You don't need to learn Norwegian no. because masters is for international students as well, and it's taught in Norwegian. Oh, it's taught in English. 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 Yeah. So you don't need to know, learn Norwegian for your master's degree. That's the best part. Yeah. But however, let's say uh, you are an, an MBBS doctor qualified mm-hmm. from India, Pakistan, or any other country, and then you come to Norway by applying a master's program in let's say, let's say in newer science, okay? Mm-hmm. And once you get accepted, and once the biggest part, the biggest challenge is to actually come to Norway. Once you get to Norway through applying to the neuroscience program, once you get here and start your master's degree in neuroscience, you can actually start learning Norwegian once you get here as well, mm. you know, on the side. So while you are learning, learning Norwegian, you can also start applying for, um, and you know, uh, and once you actually clear your language exam, Baggins test or basically a, B, a, a language exam which confirms your B2 level. That's mm-hmm. the minimum level of requirement uh, which if you want to work as a doctor or any, any other health professional. Yep. So once you get your, let's say, um, uh, um, uh, once you pass your language exam and also while on the side you are studying for your neuroscience or any master's degree, you can actually start preparing for the licensing, medical licensing exam, which you already have completed or since you already know medical stuff from your yeah. home, home country. So you can pre- basically take that authorization or licensing exam and clear that exam. And once that is done, you can actually start, you know, pursuing a medical career here in Norway while also on part-time doing some part-time master's degree in neuroscience. Yeah. So like, that's the easiest way to actually get into the system. Into the the country, biggest challenge, yeah. exactly. The biggest challenge is to come to Norway. Yeah. And since he or and since like most qu- people ask me, okay, if we are a doctor. Uh, in let's say India and you want to come to Norway, how do we do that? Now it's ra- it's extremely rare that you can apply for a job in Norway from India. And unless you have a secure job here, they, w- they will not grant you your visa, right? So the easiest way is to actually apply through a student visa yeah. for a master's degree in let's say microbiology or any other medical related field. Yeah. And once you get here, everything will get sorted out for you. You can apply for as many jobs as you want. Exactly. Yeah. So, and no tuition fee for your master's either. Best. Uh, and that's the best part. Yeah. Okay, so that was a lot of useful information, Wakar. Now, do you have anything to add before we end this video? Yeah, I actually have one or two tips before mm-hmm. I, uh, we end this video. The first tip, uh, the first thing that I want to mention is that once you apply for visa, you get mm. your visa in six to eight weeks after you six apply. Six to eight weeks, okay. Yeah, so you don't have to wait a long month before you get your visa. Mm. And the second important uh, thing that I would like to mention here is mm. that um, the entire process, uh, starting from when you apply to Norway until you get to Norway, mm. takes around one year. Okay. Because the application process starts in uh, October or December, mm. and then you come here for the semester that starts in August. All right. So it takes one year. Around one year. Okay. Mm. That's that's. I think that's pretty fine as well. I mean, yeah. it's, it may seem like a lot, but trust me, guys, it really isn't. It's much mm-hmm. easier compared to you know other countries. Uh, you know, as you already mentioned, the visa granting ratio is one hundred percent. Yeah. For, for master's degree here in Norway. So yeah, do really consider applying to Norway when you're coming here. It's a great country, free education, welfare system, a lot of benefits. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, so guys, I think that was it. And if you have any f- other further questions, kindly contact me on my email or my Instagram. And you can also contact him or watch his channel. There's a lot of u- useful tips for, you know, 
people who want to come to Norway, Norway for the studies and you know other detailed stuff about visa application if you have any further questions. So yeah, I mean, thank you for have for, for being here, Bukari. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So if you haven't any, you know, just subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Because according to my analytics, 78% of you guys have not subscribed to the channel. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. And I'll see you guys um, in the next video. So take care. Peace. Peace out. Oh, good.